Thank you. Okay. So, so this is just a quick introduction into some of the techniques uh, you can use to repair knitwear. Um, sometimes you will hear this called the duplicate stitch. Sometimes you will hear it called Swiss darning. Um, basically what you are doing is you are using yarn to mimic uh, knit stitches. So you have a needle and thread. Chat, let's see, I'm gonna open up the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Denise, awesome, we will get to this super soon. Um, so this is pretty simple for you know adventurous beginners. This is a great technique um, if you have just started sort of stitching and you don't want to make like a gigantic you know project, but you want to play around with a needle and thread. You want to maybe repair a favorite a favorite garment um, and just learn a little bit more. Uh, for inspiration, there are a lot of very interesting artists working um, in the mending space right now. Um, if you Google visible mending, if you Google Swiss darning, you'll see very practical repairs, you'll see invisible repairs, but you'll also see really fun embellishments. You'll see creative patterns, you'll see people who are pulling, you know, from Fair Isle traditions, people who are pulling from Dutch darning traditions, and who are creating really beautiful works of art that are also very sustainable mending projects. Um, so if this is something you're interested in, the blog Tom of Holland is a place I would totally check out. I would look at some of his work. Um, on the left, you can see a pretty, um, you know, introductory level uh, Swiss darning project. That's the sort of thing uh, we're going to be doing today. And on the right, you can see something that's a little bit more colorful. Um, Collingwood Norris is another fun website you can look at. She also has videos um, where you can see this in, you know, sort of slowed down if anything, you know, if you forget anything and you want to come back and learn more, if you want to explore this technique in greater detail, I would suggest you check that out. And you can see here, um, these repairs are practical, but they're also very decorative. So this can be a fun one for some inspiration as well. Uh, basically, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be taking a sweater with a hole in it. We're going to be taking some sewing thread, some lightweight wool yarn, and a tapestry needle. That's all you need to do this, um, and some safety pins, and we will be repairing. So first things, I'm going to do all of this with the actual sweater that I've got right here, um, but I just want to take you through a couple of the steps before we do anything else so you know where we're going, so you know where we're headed. Um, so I'm just going to check on the chat before we move any further. Um, Marianne asks, if you want the mending to be invisible, where can you get matching yarn? Uh, we had a conversation about this a couple weeks ago. There are a couple brands that specialize in selling lightweight mending yarn, which can be really useful if you are trying to match, say, like a fancy cashmere sweater and you don't want to, you know, just use like a heavyweight worsted yarn or something. You want something fine. Um, I think it might be St. Pierre yarns. Um, I got most of my mending yarn from a Canadian company uh, called, I think it's Wabi Sabi. Um, and then you can buy uh, sort of just fine yarn intended for lace making projects uh, if you are working on a sweater that's a little bit heavier. Um, great. So I'm going to just X out of the chat and return to this. So first things you want to do, uh, you want to clean up your hole. It's a little bit traumatic sometimes to cut away and maybe make the hole look a little bit bigger, um, but it will be harder for you to work if you have a lot of loose scraggly yarns. If your hole maybe was created by like a pull and there's, you know, a giant loop and things are kind of falling apart, it's best to trim anything, um, catch any excess loops. You can see I've got a safety pin at the top and the bottom. So none of these stitches are going to, you know, sort of get worse. It's not gonna fall apart. I've trapped the hole in place uh, before we repair it. Um, next, what you're gonna do is use your sewing thread, thread that through a needle and you're going to want to connect um, the loops at the top and the loops at the bottom. 
So I've got a diagram over on the right hand side. We're not doing the dark yarn part at the uh, bottom of that diagram. We are putting in sort of those finer lines in the background. Um, when we talk about knitting, uh, I'm gonna use the word whales and courses today. Um, a course is a horizontal sort of pass. If you're going back and forth, if you're knitting, you are adding courses. You are adding sort of um, more stitches to your knitting. And a whale is the vertical version of that stitch. So you are connecting the whales here. And we'll return to this if this is confusing. Um, but you are creating a guide for your stitching and you are making sure that your project is gonna remain flat, that it's not gonna sort of distort. Some people will work with a darning egg if you're working on a sock or a three-dimensional object. Um, I'm working on the arm of a sweater and I want that to be flat, so I am working flat. Then this is what we're gonna do today. Um, you're going to use a different yarn. You're gonna use your uh, yarn threaded through your tapestry needle, um, and you're gonna start adding in those duplicate stitches. Uh, you're gonna work until that hole is filled, and then you're gonna tie it off. Um, and we will demonstrate that using the hand camera. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail um, till we get to there. This is another diagram. Um, you can see this, would, this is what it would look like if you were embellishing something. Um, this person is working on an object that doesn't have a hole. They are just sort of mimicking the knit stitches that are already there. Um, but this is kind of the basics of what you're doing. You're making these loops. You're following the loops in your knitting, but you're using a needle and thread instead of a knitting needle. Yeah. So, and you can also use this to connect um, you know, raw edges of knitting projects you've made or rips and knits, um, but today we're gonna talk about holes. So I am going to exit out of this and stop sharing my screen. And Mina, could you now spotlight the hand cam? Great, thank you so much. So, um, So if any of that is confusing, um, I just wanna show you what I'm talking about. Um, work on this live instead in the hopes that this will make um, a little bit more sense. So you can see right here, I've already started. Um, I've got a hole in this sweater. There are some raw little loops at the bottom. If I left this on its own, if I tried to wear it, um, this would probably continue to get worse. I'd wind up with one of those long runs in my knitting. It would be pretty sad. So I am going to try and repair it. I've already started by uh, sort of taking my sewing thread. I've secured it down here. I just used a knot. If this were done in a matching color, I think it would be pretty invisible. But because this is a really uh, sort of relaxed knit and I'm doing it in bright pink, you can see it. So I've secured my knot kind of far away from the hole in an area where I know that there's no moth damage, an area that I know is not weak, that's not gonna fall apart. Um, and I have run that sewing thread up one of these whales. This is where we're gonna use those phrases again. Um, the whale is that long line of stitching. Um, so I've run my sewing thread just up the center of that whale and I've popped out of the top of this loop right here. And I've gone all the way up to the top of the hole. I've gone behind this whale and I've come down. I returned to the same loop that I popped out of. And then I went underneath to come out of the next whale. So then I popped up here. I went up to the top. I went behind this whale. I came down. I went into the loop, I came out of the next whale, I went back up to the top, went behind, came down, and I'm just gonna finish that right here so that I have a guide for my stitching. If you have a large or irregularly shaped hole, sometimes you can kind of forget what whale you're supposed to be working in as you work. And these will keep us sort of aligned. These will keep us on the straight and narrow, as I add my knit stitches, I know that I will be headed 
up through the same whale if I follow these uh, sort of bars that I've put in place, these gigantic ladder stitches. So I am just going to do that now. I'm going back down into the center of this whale, of this loop. I'm coming up in the next loop. I'm going up here. I'm sneaking behind. And then I'm going to come back down here. So now I've added these bars in. I've got about, you know, maybe a quarter to a half of an inch on this side of the hole. I've got a quarter to a half of an inch on this side of the hole. I know that I've created an area um, where I'm going to start in a secure part of the knit and I'm going to end in a secure part of the knit. So I'm not just darning only the weakest point where the edges might fall apart and I might wind up with a bigger hole. Um, I've created now a zone of repair um, that should be pretty stable. So now I'm going to tie off my sewing thread um, and I won't need it again. I can set my sewing thread aside, pick up my yarn and get started with the duplicate stitch. So I saw someone in the chat um, asked if this will be available. Uh, yes, this is on the Carrie Library's YouTube page. Mina is recording it um, and you can find past videos and future videos there. So I'm just gonna make a couple stitches right here. Um, just a few back stitches to secure my sewing thread without adding too much bulk. And then I'm just gonna tuck my tail by stitching down kind of directly um, into this. Anna, I, I have a question, Anna. Is um, yes. is that thread just regular thread? It's not thick or thin or uh, this is uh, absolutely all-purpose thread. I got it on sale when I was making masks. I needed a bright pink, so this is just the exact same uh, sewing thread that I put in my machine. Okay, thank you. Um, you can use the yarn uh, that you are darning with for this step. It will add a little bit of bulk. But particularly if you know you want that, if you want to create like a raised embellishment, if you want, you know, like a design that kind of pops out, um, feel free to use your yarn instead of sewing thread. For the next step, you want to find a tapestry needle or like a plastic needle, something with a blunt tip so that when you are working, when you stab into your um, knitwear, it'll kind of go around the threads, it'll go around the yarns um, rather than stab through them. The blunt tip will make this a lot easier than a sharp tip. And this is some fine wool embroidery yarn. I bought this online. I've also bought it on Etsy before, just searching for lightweight mending yarn, uh, lightweight embroidery yarn. Um, it's not particularly fancy, uh, but it is a fun color. So I'm going to use this in the hopes that you'll be able to see it. But if you can't, um, feel free to ask questions. So what I am doing here um, I'm going to start again far away from the hole. If I had moth damage, I would just want to assume that the area around the hole was pretty fragile. And again, if you do this in a matching color, it's invisible. I'm doing it in bright orange so you will be able to see. I am just going to tuck my tail and I'm going to pop up in the middle of this knit stitch. You can see my needle is coming out of the center of this loop at the bottom here. Uh, 
I'm going to go around these two sewing thread lines and follow the knit stitch. I'm creating a stitch that's about the same size and I'm gonna go back down into the same loop where I came out and then pop out of the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat this all the way across this row. So Caroline says that she purchased some fine wool yarning, darning yarn locally a few months ago at the store Another Yarn in Burlington. Wonderful. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> I am always excited to know about a local place. As I said, I bought this stuff in Canada um, because when I see good, you know, darning yarn, I take it and it would be much nicer to only have to go to uh, Burlington. So I'm trying to keep loose tension. Um, you can see this is a pretty large gauge knit. Um, so these stitches are pretty loose. If you do it on a tighter gauge knit, they look like little V's. And so that's how you know you're doing this properly. If you see a line of little V's appearing on your knitwear. Once you've finished with your first pass, once you've finished with that first row, um, it gets easier if you then flip your project upside down and start adding your stitches in now top to bottom. Linda mentions that darning yarn often comes with cotton um, instead of wool. You can absolutely use uh, cotton yarn for this. Um, I think the wool is a little bit more flexible, which makes it a better, you know, match for a nice flexible wool sweater. The reason I like Swiss darning instead of regular darning, instead of just, you know, over, under, over, under stitching is because this gives you a repair that is equally flexible to the rest of your sweater. If I make these loops the same size as the knitting here, um, it's not going to be tight. It's not going to feel too bulky. It's going to be a really good match. So cotton um, might make that a little bit more challenging, um, but you could absolutely try it and it might look really nice. So here I'm doing the same thing. I've popped out of this hole. I'm going through. And then I'm stabbing back into the loop I made that first time. So now I'm coming up out of those stitches we made the first time. I'm going around those two threads and I'm going back down into the stitches we made. Now this spot right here, this is where I had my loose loop. This is where I had my moment of breakage. So when I come up out of here, I want to make sure that I'm going through the center of that loop so that I secure it. This will keep this from unraveling further. And so here I'm not stitching into a pre-existing um, stitch on the other side. I am just stitching into space. I'm just stitching into the center of this hole. And this is where it becomes really helpful to have the sewing uh, thread to ground you. So I'm just gonna make a loop and it's gonna be floating in space. And I'm gonna try and make sure that the tension looks right. I'm gonna try and make sure that it's about the same size as the loops around it, that it's not too big and it's not too small. And then when I go through on the next passage, I'll come up out of this loop and secure it. So when you go from run uh, from one row to the next, you stab down 
into that loop and then you come up in the same whale, you come up very vertically and just pop out of the top. So now I'm back in the area where I've got my hole and I'm gonna come up through the center of the loop that we left behind. And this will secure that. This will make sure that we do not have any future runs in this area. And I think you're like sort of way at the end of your phone. Oh, there sorry. You Thank you. <laughs> After, what is it, eight months on Zoom, we're all a little bit blind. So I'm trying to move it closer to me, but that means further away from you. Um, so now that I've secured those loops, I'm going to remove my safety pins also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can see I've almost run out of yarn. Um, so you can switch colors at this point. I was working with a sort of bright orange. Um, I'm gonna switch to a bright red now just because I need more yarn. Um, and on the back, it looks a lot like a knit stitch. It looks a lot just like the reverse of um, a regular stitch. I am going to stitch into the darning thread that I've added just with the idea that the original thread might be fragile and I wouldn't want to lose that. And I'm just gonna tuck my tail again into the thread that I have. So by tying off my thread, I've left myself with a little zone here where I've got a lot of yarn. Um, I'm just going to stitch into this to secure my knot. Um, again, with the idea that what I've added is probably more stable than the moth-eaten um, area that I started with. And then I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing I'm just gonna do maybe one or two more rows um, in the new color and then we will be done. Then we will have finished with our darn. Anybody have any questions while Anna Rose? Um, 
Here, I'll just say, if you find you have pulled too tight, I just made a stitch where I pulled a little bit too tight. You can use your nice blunt tapestry needle, kind of go back in there, adjust your tension, um, mess around with it however you see fit. So that looks pretty secure to me. And that right there, those are the basics. Oh, I'm so glad the red thread was easier. Um, I'm gonna do one more pass with it then in the hopes that you can see the contrast. It's a little bit finer. Um, so you can see I'm coming up out of the center of this loop. I'm going behind, um, just like the existing knit stitches do. I'm going down into the center of the loop, and then I'm just coming out in the next stitch. So, And as we said before, this looks a lot um, like in Tarsha. This looks a lot like certain color work techniques. So if you wanted to add design, if you wanted to say, you know, put a snowflake on something, if you wanted to um, put a heart or even a little monogram on something, um, you can do really free form color work using Swiss darning uh, and it blends really nicely into the existing area. It just looks um, like knit stitches. It just adds a very organic sort of design. I am, and again, just gonna come back. I'm just gonna make a little stitch here, tie a knot. Um, a couple of mm -hmm. questions. Brenda's asking, I need to repair a fine cashmere sweater with moth holes. Do I look for the fine yarn or can I use a regular thread? Uh, regular thread is going to be, um, Harsh. You can see the edges of this are very soft. So regular thread, it's smaller and it's a lot stronger and it's not very flexible. So if your sweater is overall in good condition, if it's a couple moth holes, but the rest of it is fine, I think regular thread would be fine. But if it's fragile, if it's older, say if it's something that's vintage, um, I would be worried about how much this could pull. You know, you can easily snap through fine yarns um, with a strong thread. So I probably wouldn't go with something that's polyester, you know, that's going to be stronger than a cotton all-purpose thread. I would pick, you know, the most flexible cotton thread I could find. Um, I've also, I've got a whole bucket of sweaters here for you guys to see, to talk a little bit about past repairs. Um, these are all done in contrasting colors, uh, but silk can be a really nice match for cashmere as well. You can find very fine silk embroidery thread that's really um, not too heavyweight. There's a company, Piper Silk, um, that will sell you silk embroidery thread in basically every color under the rainbow. Um, and you can add darning stitches sort of like this, where first you stitch back and forth in one direction, then you stitch back and forth in the other direction. Um, and those can be pretty organic repairs as well. They can be pretty nice. Yeah, here's another example um, of how I might do that. You can see all of the threads. First, I put in in one direction, then I put in the other direction. I've left a lot of repair around what is a pretty tiny hole, um, but this makes me feel confident that it won't get worse. Um, if you could take me off spotlight, maybe I'd love to chat with people to see if there are any other questions. Sure. Um, I'm going to stop.